Welcome, everybody. Let me hit this gotcha. All right, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience. We are just uh, tickle pink that you decided to hold on while we take care of this uh, these uh, technical difficulties. You know, the enemy is trying to go crazy. You know why? <laughs> because we have a big, wonderful, inspiring word for you tonight. Y'all okay. might as well get excited and start clapping your hands. Yep, um, because okay. it's going to be on. <laughs> it's going to be on. Right. So what we're going to do is, because we are running a little late, I'm not going to hold y'all by by chatter. Let's just go into prayer. Okay. Our Heavenly Father, we join together at your throne of grace to say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for entrusting us with your plans for our lives. Thank you for connecting us to resources and inspiring words and encouragement and mostly your inspired vision to carry out the plan you have for our lives. Open our hearts, Lord. Open our minds and spirit to receive your message tonight. We give you all the praise and worship your holy name. And we say glory to you in the name of Jesus. And we're going to move right on into uh, Ardina. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Well, welcome, everyone. Once again, we always like to introduce our faith team. So Lottie, who was just giving us a word of prayer, Karen Foster, Anna Tut, GC, um, Reverend Sauls, Reverend Stalling, Captain G, Bishop Gates, and then also our speaker tonight, Dr. Kathy Cash. And I'm Ardina Brooks. Amen. Okay. And then Karen, we now want to introduce our guest speaker tonight. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Dr. Kathy Cash is a veteran of the United States Army and currently serves in the American Legion as state chaplain for the Department of California and first vice commander of Jackie Robinson Post 252 in Los Angeles. Dr. Cash is the pastor and founder of Determined to Know Christ Ministries, a global online ministry. She holds a Doctor of Divinity degree and recently completed an assignment as interim pastor of the historic Zion Hill Baptist Church in Los Angeles. Dr. Cash recently retired from the Los Angeles VA, where she was an integral part of peer leadership on a national level. Dr. Cash is also an artist, having recently presented paintings and shared poetry at pop-up cafes sponsored by the Veterans Art Project vetart.org in Los Angeles and Sacramento. Dr. Cash hosts a podcast entitled Change Your Focus and Live Life and co-hosts the podcast Operation Confidence, America's Invisible Heroes. Both podcasts can be heard on major podcast platforms. Her encouragement to all, especially women veterans is, reclaim your power and step into your purpose. Dr. Cash lives in Los Angeles and is the mother of three adult children. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Dr. Kathy Cash. Amen. Thank you, Karen, so much. Thank you very much for the introduction. I am excited to be here on tonight uh, talking about spiritual wellness. So often when we are in business, when we're working, we forget to take care of ourselves. And when we forget to take care of ourselves, everything around us begins to crumble. And if you don't believe it, watch when things start crumbling around you, look and see what is going on with you. Don't point the finger out and say, they are doing this to me, he's doing this to me, she's doing this to me. Get a mirror and look at yourself and see what are you doing for yourself? Because in the Bible, God tells us to, first of all, we love God, and then we love our neighbor as ourself. So we can't do anything outside until we take care of ourselves. So I'm going to attempt to share this um, PowerPoint. And let's see if we can get this on here. OK. Do you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. OK. So I'm excited tonight. I am presenting 
uh, Divine Guidance in Entrepreneurship, Nurturing Spirituality Amidst Business Challenges. There are so many, uh-oh. Okay, let's do this again. There are so many challenges when we look at our businesses. There are so many things that go on with us that we cannot, or we have we have difficulty um, moving forward to make sure that we do what we're supposed to do. And as part of the faith team, we're looking at the fact that when we look at our faith, we're recognizing that there is someone greater than us. We're not in this alone. We're not on this journey alone. So we have divine guidance in all that we're doing, whether we're working for ourselves or working for someone else. And in any case, we do run into challenges in this world of business. And what I wanna share with you tonight is three particular areas. There are many areas, but I wanna share with you three particular areas that we run into challenges with. Um, the first one is integrating faith and business ethics. Again, when we talk about faith, we're talking about what do you believe in? Where do you hold your belief system? Are you kind to people? Do you think it's necessary to be kind? And that flows right into your business ethics. Are you known as a cheater? Are you known as one who is dishonest in your business dealings? So that's that first part. And then balancing your work and your spiritual life. It is so easy to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and then not tap into your spirituality. And I wanna say religion is spirituality, but spirituality is not religion. When we look at spirituality, we're, we're, there are different forms, different things that we can do to tap into our spirituality. So it's not necessarily religion, but religion is one part of spirituality. And then the third point is finding purpose in your entrepreneurship. Because everything we do has a purpose. Everything we do has a purpose. And then when we realize that there is a purpose that we have to tap into, that helps us to examine our spirituality, with help, which helps us to become successful in whatever business we choose to go into. So in today's fast-paced business world, it's essential to nurture your spiritual well-being. You can't just say, well, when I get around to it, well, I'll wait for somebody to call me. You are in charge of your own spirituality. You find out the things that work for you. Meditation, exercise, walking by a, a body of water, going to church, listening to music. What allows you to tap into your inner self? So when you find out what you need to do to tap into your inner self, you be, you're able to find that harmony between your professional and your personal life. And then when that happens, you unlock new levels of purpose, resilience, and fulfillment. You can work all day. You can make all the money in the world. But if you are not happy, if you are not fulfilled, if you do not have a purpose, you will not be successful. Because having a lot of money does not equal success. Having a lot of money does not equal success. Many people will dispute that until they get a lot of money. And then when they get a lot of money, they're like, I'm not as happy as I used to be because now I don't have any purpose. I don't have anything to do with what I'm doing. So we wanna make sure that we're tapping into that spirituality. We're tapping into our inner being so that we can take our inner being and, and, and tie it together, unite it with our outer being, with our environment. So the first one we're gonna talk about is integrating faith and business ethics. So when we look at this, we're looking at honesty and integrity, we're looking at our stewardship, and we're looking at servant leadership. Being able to say that you are honest and you have integrity in your business, that is tantamount when you're talking about the type of people you work with. Whenever you have customers, your customers will come to you and they'll continue to come to you and they'll tell others about you if you have that integrity. If you are honest, if you are straightforward, 
if you provide good customer service, all of that is included with that honesty and integrity. And then the concept of stewardship, how are you taking care of what you've been blessed with? How are you taking care of the things that are under your control? How are you taking care of that? Are you, be, are you procrastinating? Are you putting it into the hands of someone who does not understand? What are you doing to show that you have great stewardship? And then the lastly, then lastly, we're looking at the servant leadership. As entrepreneurs, usually you are, you may be the sole person. And then you may be the person in charge of a few other people. But however way you are leading, you're leading as a servant. Because our example is Jesus Christ. Our example of how we tie our faith into our business ethics is how, when we look at in the word, how Jesus operated while he was here on earth. In Matthew 21, the story of Jesus going to the temple and the money changers were there and they were cheating people out of their money, selling a little bitty dove for three times as much, just robbing the people. And he had to turn over tables and shut down everything because he needed to show the importance of integrity when you are doing business. You have to be one of high integrity in order to continue your business. If you have, if you are one who does not value integrity in your business, you will not be around a long time. I'm going to say that again. If you do not value integrity in your business, you will not be around a long time because people will hear what you're doing. They will see what you're doing and then they will feel a certain kind of way when they're doing business with you. And then they will no longer be doing business with you. These are customers, clients, suppliers. People will not want to do business with you because your integrity is not there. In the book of Micah, the prophet Micah says, what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God? So we talk about integrity, when in integrating faith and our business ethics, that's exactly what we're talking about. What is it that you're here to do? Be kind to one another. Show that integrity, show that character, show that you know that you are supposed to be doing right. The second point, balancing work and spiritual life. Balancing work and spiritual life. When I worked, people would be proud of the fact that they didn't miss a day of work all year. They came to work if they were sick. They came to work if they weren't, if they were slightly sick, if they had, if they should have stayed home and rested because they were super tired, they came to work anyway. Working through your health challenges is not a badge of honor. And in order to know that, you have to be able to balance your work life and your spiritual life. And in your spiritual life, if you are not feeling well, it's okay. We are human, we are not machines. We are human. So we have the opportunity to rest when we need to rest, to, to take care of ourselves when we need to take care of ourselves. If we're getting sick and we need to slow down, then we need to slow down. It's not so much that nobody else can do it because usually as an entrepreneur, nobody else can do it. But watch this, if you don't balance that and you get sick to the point where you're not able to work at all, then nobody will be doing it. So you wanna be able to balance your work life and your spiritual life. An example that I love here is when we look at Jesus' work on earth, he was always teaching, always going, 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 going. But then he took time to go and be in solitary with God. He took time to go and reconnect with God. He took time to pray. All of these are ways to get in connection with your spirituality. Maybe you just need to take time and go to Catalina, ride the boat over and do nothing. Unplug. Sometimes people are afraid to unplug. They think something is going to happen 
if they miss a call, if they miss an email. But you have to get away from that because your work life and your spiritual life have to be in balance. Your spiritual wellness has to be in balance because spiritual wellness is one of the eight dimensions of wellness. There are eight areas of our lives that have been evidence-based that when these eight dimensions are in alignment, they're all we're all doing well in them, then we are overall in a good place. But if something is out of whack, then it takes something else out of whack, which takes something else out of whack. And then guess what? We are not in a good place. So we want to make sure that we continue to keep ourselves well, because if we're not well, we cannot move forward with what we have to do. If we're not well, then we can't be we can't be the business person that we are trying to be. We can't make the meeting that we need to make because we haven't taken care of ourselves before. So every now and then you have to unplug. You have to turn the cell phone off. You have to stop taking uh, emails, checking the emails. There was a study that said when people wake up in the morning, first thing they do is grab their phone and start checking email and checking social media. Switch that up. Switch that up and allow your spiritual wellness to take priority. So if you're going to pick up your phone in the morning, pick it up to make a call to a prayer line. Pick it up to read scripture. Pick it up to do something that would allow you to connect with yourself. Maybe you want to pick it up and, and listen to some music. Whatever you need to do to get your spirituality intact, that's what it's calling you to do because your work life and your spiritual life have to be in balance. Otherwise, the rest of your life, the rest of your business, the rest of everything around you will be out of balance. And then the third thing, finding purpose in entrepreneurship. Why did you decide to become an entrepreneur? That's a personal question because there are many questions, there's many, there are many answers to that based on the person. Some people are entrepreneurs basically from birth. They had a lemonade stand when they were five and made dolls when they were eight. And that's entrepreneur spirit has been throughout their th throughout their upbringing. And then there were those who were born into an entrepreneur family where the parents, your parents were entrepreneurs and you took on the business that they created being an entrepreneur yourself. And then there are others who were employed. And at some point they said, I'm tired of working and making this person all this money when I can make this person this money for me. I'm tired of taking my talents, my gifts, and spending them or using them in a way that is not beneficial, fully beneficial to me. Because again, you may be doing what you love to do, but are you spiritually whole when you're doing it? Do you feel a certain kind of way? Maybe the business ethics of where you're working may not be right but you can want to continue doing that job. Hey, why can't I do this for myself? I know how to do the business. I want to start doing it. There are many reasons that we go into entrepreneurship, but recognizing that he, God said he has plans for us, plans to prosper us, plans that we may not know what they are, but they are not there to harm us. So we have to remember that when we decide to follow what our spiritual mind is telling us. And we go toward that entrepreneurship or whatever path we decide to take, finding that purpose, finding that purpose. Because when you have purpose, then you develop that passion because then it becomes something that you wanna do. And so here, the parable of the talents one of my favorite stories where we're talking about stewardship and purposeful investment, where the story goes that the master left town and left three of his servants uh, talents or sums of money. He left one, one, he left another five and left another 10. The one that had 10 invested it, doubled it and said, here you are, master, look at what I did. You've been a good steward. 
you've been faithful over these few things, I'll make you ruler over many. And then the one who had five talents did the same thing. He took it and he invested it and doubled the money and was able to present to the master that he had done something. But then the third person was selfish. He took his talent and he buried it because he didn't want the master to get mad at him if he had lost it in the investment. So what is your purpose for doing what you do? Are you doing it for the betterment of your community? Are you doing it because it is a passion of yours where you want to use your talents to help somebody else? Or are you doing it out of greed or selfishness? What is it that you are doing? Because we're instructed not to conform to the patterns of the world. We're of the mindset that we're not doing what the world does, but we're doing something um, different than the world does. Because since we're tap, we tap into our spirituality, we're able to transform and renew our mind so that as we move forward, we continue to be a godly example in the such that we are merciful, we are kind, we are caring, we are compassionate, we are loving. All of those are important in the business world. You may not think so, some may not think so, but those are very important in the business world because without having the ability to communicate with people or have relationships with people, then it becomes a challenge to conduct business and be whole yourself at the end of your workday because your workday does come to an end. And if it doesn't, it should. Because when we talked about the second point, balancing that work life and your spiritual life, you cannot run 24 seven. You cannot continue to go without taking a break. So we want to share, I want to share, uh, I wanted to share these three points with you. There are many more, but I wanted to share these three because I thought these were three of the most important ones. Being able to integrate your faith and your business ethics, being able to balance your work life and your spiritual life. And then lastly, finding purpose in your entrepreneurship. Because when you do these three things, your spiritual wellness becomes intact your spiritual wellness becomes whole and it joins the circle of the other seven dimensions in that wheel of eight dimensions of wellness because if one is out of whack then all of them will be out of whack so this is just one spoke in the wheel if you will where your spiritual wellness is is intact your balance your kind to others you're showing good stewardship you of course have that integrity you are honest and you are able to show others in the business world that you're conducting business in such a way that you would not be ashamed if somebody were to call your name. If someone were to talk bad about you because of how you present yourself, people will not believe that that is you. Character, having good character is when, is acting the best way you can, even when people are not looking. So we want to make sure that you are focusing on serving others and making a positive impact in the world through your business. Identifying your personal values, identifying your purpose, and cultivating your passion are what are some of the keys to overcoming those challenges in the business world. And so I would like to open it up for any questions. I'm going to stop sharing, I think. Oh, wow. It looks like to me, uh, y'all, uh, that sounds like it's going to be a part two coming soon. <laughs> That's what that sounds like. <laughs> a part two. Uh, but I do have a, a question. You mentioned Micah. Uh-huh. Uh, and I, you didn't give a, a scripture, do you, a, a, a scripture, a chapter of scripture. Do you have one for that? Uh, my, I'm sorry, Micah 6, 8. Six eight. Thank you. Okay. Thank yes. you. Because yes. that's what he requires for us to act justly, to mm -hmm. love, mercy, and to walk humbly with God. Because when we do that, then we're showing people what a business person, what an entrepreneur, what someone who loves and has a passion for what they're doing, someone who has that and is able to show that to others and Amen. be that example in the business world. 
This is good. This is always a reminder. <laughs> yeah, the balancing. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Any other questions? Amen. Well, maybe we can throw it out at the audience uh, if you don't mind. Uh, since nobody has any questions, maybe we can get some input on how how uh, they balance uh, themselves. How do they uh, deal with uh, balancing uh, work and business, business and personal lives? Uh, we got a couple of folks on. Okay, so you want to call to make the month payments, right? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. How do we put Anna on? Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. Um, anybody want to share? Cheryl, are you there? Yes, I am. Maybe, maybe you can, because you're the hardest working person I know. You up <laughs> early in the morning and late at night. Do, are you still? Are, do you even go to bed? That's what I need to ask. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, do I what? Please, I'm sorry. <laughs> I say, do you even go to bed? You're the hardest working person I, I know. How do I you balance? How do you balance uh, business and uh, personal life? Your personal life. Well, ma'am, you know I do get seven to eight hours. An, uh, uh, Mm -hmm. Block out. Froze. Oh, she froze. Uh -oh, we lost. You. Okay, let me let me look over in the the thing here again. Let me see. Uh, Ray MacArthur, um, hi. How are you? Yeah. Oh. So uh, I just know that it'll work. But um, I make sure that I balance it because I like what I do. So you know. I, I know that my health is important. So I just, you know, I, I make time to meditate and to think about what's going on in the world and the stressors that are going on and how we serve the people. So I have to be a good, I have to be in good condition to serve them. So Amen. that's how I, I think about it. That's Amen. how I think. Yes, Amen. 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 Um, I called a, a Ray MacArthur is on the line as well. Ray, do you mind sharing? No, not, not at all. Thank you very much. Um, one I, I recently started was um, you know, I get up, like she said, mentioned about not turning on the telephone or looking at the phone, but also saying not to before going to bed. If you can, the last hour before going to bed, not look at the TV, the computer, because it can give you more peace and, you know, relax yourself. So I've started practicing on the morning. I don't, I, I'll either read or uh, or Bible or something like that, but I don't turn on the TV. I don't um, um, check my emails. I don't do any of that type of stuff. And so I'm working on that. I, amen. Amen. All we can do is try, right? <laughs> Make an attempt at least. So we have one more, uh, Ardina, one more. Uh, I see we have Oprah Price on. Oprah, are you there? Oprah's in the house. Uh, another, another hard worker. Okay. <laughs> Yes, I am. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I, I love that question. Um, and it is very important. And, you know, I am busy uh, quite a bit, but I also stop and I do realize that morning time is a time for you to give God your blessed, your, your prayers, your thoughts, um, and it's a time to, you know, commune with him. And um, it's something I had to stop years ago because I would wake up in the morning because you have so much on your mind. Mm -hmm. I would wake up, I'd look at my phone, I'd rush to get on my emails, you know, because that's a part of your work. Mm -hmm. But I understand that God comes first. Mm -hmm. And he Amen. allowed me to wake up that morning. Amen. He allowed me to open my eyes. And I have mm -hmm. to stop and give him the glory before I start my day. Amen. And that's one of the things I had to really work on. And I, I don't read a scripture every morning, but I do have a uh, uh, women's Bible, um, you know, that I read every day. Mm -hmm. And those are some of the things that I do in the morning before I start my day. Amen. And I can tell you, it helps a great deal. 
Amen. Because I know what it's like when I don't do what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. And I'm in the middle of them saying, oh, I know why my day is held to Skelty. I didn't do this. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I always try to give God the glory and the praise, uh, not just in the morning, but I know that he brought me through that night. He woke me up and he helped me to start. My day. Mm -hmm. So I am loyal about that right now. Amen. 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 Everybody, can I share these seven things that um seven ways to check in with your spiritual wellness? Okay. The first one, do you allow yourself time alone? Do you allow yourself time alone? That's the first one. Then the second one, do you pray or reach out to a higher power? Do you pray or reach out to a higher power? This is how you check in with your spiritual wellness. The third one is, do you think about the meaning of life? Do you sometimes just sit and think about the meaning of life? Number four, take walks in nature and appreciate the transformation of each season. One case in point, with the eclipse yesterday, were you working too hard or too busy to take time and look at the eclipse? Something to think about when you're checking in with your spiritual wellness. Next, do you pause to remind yourself that life isn't all about you? Life isn't all about you. Do you have to remind yourself? Do you take time to remind yourself of that? Mm. We talked about this one. Do you put your phone down to just be? Do you put your phone down to just be? And then lastly, do you practice activities that allow you to slow down? Do you practice activities that allow you to slow down? So these are just seven ways to check in with your spiritual wellness. And when you do that, you'll be able to reflect on how you are, reflect on what you're doing, and reflect on what's going on in your own life. Amen. Amen. Miss Ardina, thank you so much. Thank Amen. you. I, I just like to add to that and thank you so much, Dr. Cash. Uh, I know for me, whenever I hear this, it's like, you need to listen. <laughs> it's always uh, a reminder because the word balance has definitely been one of the words every year that I'm, I'm really close to dealing with me on, and uh, as Pablo already mentioned, for me, I do get up in the morning, I do have a um, devotional, so that is my, my go-to. It's like, okay, I can't do anything else until I do that. And I may miss one or two, but I get that devotional, get it in at, at the day. But, but one, one of the things that, that um, and, and I mean, I love all of this that, that, that you, you mentioned. The word, when you say unplug, that one just resonated for me, this unplug. And I know what's going on, on in my life right now. So I'm learning and trying to listen to the Holy Spirit when he's telling me, okay, it's time to do this, time to do that. Sit back, sit down, be quiet, just listening. And that's, that's, that's where I'm at, trying to hear him and talk throughout the day. I pray in the morning. Before I go to bed, I'll just may talk to the Lord, but just trying to be in communication with him all throughout the day. That's where I'm at right now. And walking. Walking for me has been like a breath of fresh air to be able to unplug, like you talked about, just unplug so that if you're not hearing the phones, you're not on the computer, you're not checking emails, I'm not doing work. I don't even take my phone with me when I go walking. It's just me and the Lord. So thank you so much for, for sharing that. And since we've already done Q and A, <laughs> <laughs> um, we have uh, nine minutes left. Um, do we have time to do our 15 second, 15 second pitch? <laughs> Let's 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 give it a try. Let's give it a try. Why don't we start with Karen? You want to give us your fifteen minute tip? Uh, tip pitch. 
Yes, I am Karen Foster, and thank you, uh, Dr. Cash, for that very profound and prophetic word. Uh, I am owner of Trinity Three Investments Inc. and Growth Capital, and I help clients build generational wealth and passive income through real estate investments and finance. Thank, thank you. you. Lighting. Okay, yes, uh, Lottie Cleveland, the proud owner of Miss Lottie's Cornbread Mix, a mix that brings that Southern uh, taste and smell and flavor to every household. Amen. Ms. Cheryl Tate, would you like to give your pitch, please? 15 seconds. I'm doing nine things at one time. <laughs> Get yeah. even with that. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Chef Cheryl Tate. I am the owner of Nurturing Chefs LA Personal Chef Services. I'm a fourth generation food service hospitality professional. I um, answer your what's for dinner question. <laughs> I am also the um, a board member of the Hope Foundation, and I'm also the director of the Health and Wellness uh, team, and um, we are knitted together in this ministry of uh, saving lives and changing lives. So I just look forward to this opportunity working with everybody. And I'm so glad to be here. Amen. Thank you, Cheryl. Ray McArthur, would you like to give your 15 seconds pitch? Hi, <clears throat> excuse me. First, I wanna start with saying thank you in that. This morning, I went to my first uh, Hope round table and it was very good. But prior, as I was walking up, there was a gentleman <clears throat> sitting on the curb, literally putting on his legs. And so it just tells us, you know, we complain. What are you complaining about? Mm -hmm. So um, starting with a, a place of gratitude. Number Now, I'm a contractor. I'm working with the De La Rosa Group, a large construction company, but I'm the plumbing contractor manager. And what I'm working on is working more with senior citizen needs, uh, the grab bars, the of different things that make you more comfortable in your home. Because I've had, I've been in the industry for 40 years. And the funny thing is I've just had so many senior citizens that went out of their way to serve me. And now I'm a senior citizen. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's where I'm at. So uh, just any plumbing, heating, air conditioning, room addition, painting, we do everything. They primarily do com commercial stuff, shopping malls, Ontario mills, but I'm managing and growing the residential part of it. So it's Ray MacArthur. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Brother Ray. And Bishop De Deidre Gra uh, Gates, would you like to give your pitch? Maybe we have to come back. Brother GC, you in the house? Uh, yes, I am. But I'd like to say, first of all, uh, thank, I want to thank Dr. Cash for her timely message. She hit it right on the head when she talked <laughs> about those different points. And the very first one, I use that a lot. When I'm reading my Bible, I just get into it. I'm in a quiet place, and I try to put myself into the scriptures with whoever I'm reading about. With, with that said, I am uh, uh, the owner of the American Dream News. We, we publish 95% positive news. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Brother GC. And Ms. Oprah Price, would you like to share your pitch, please? Oprah's got a few hats on right now. Did I miss anyone? You Bishop, and then Bishop, me. Okay, Bishop Gates. Uh, I don't okay, think she's feeling well. Okay. All right, Dr. Cash, you want to go? So uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, Karen, thank you for reading my bio earlier, just reiterating. Uh, my pastor determined no Christ ministry, an online ministry. Um, i a U.S. Army veteran, retired from the VA. I am the chaplain for the state of California with the American Legion. And 
I am a podcaster. Change your focus and live life is what I often share with people because when we think that something's going on, just like, um, and it's funny, Ray, when you said that earlier, when we look at one thing, if we change our focus and then we realize what we're complaining about, we need to have gratitude for it and be able to live our life. So change your focus and live life. Um, and so I'm just grateful to be a part of the chamber, not your average chamber. Um, <laughs> been a part of it for many, many years. And so I just appreciate all the all of the work that has gone into making this a successful organization. And thank you, Mr. Dexter, for all that you do. Amen. Well, I'm Thank Martina you. Brooks, and I am the founder and CEO of Designs by Ardina. And I basically help people to preserve their heritage and legacy, their history, by bringing life to their photos so that you can continue to tell your stories and pass them on from generation to generation. Our stories are in our photos, and if we do not pass them on, they will deteriorate. They will fade away and you will definitely lose those memories, those visual memories forever. And I, again, I like to say thank you, uh, Dr. Cash. That was amazing. I took notes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget Anna. Did I miss Anna? I'm so sorry. Miss Anna. Anna Tut. It is okay. It is okay. <laughs> you know, I'm over here working, but I was listening and my client was very patient, but I am so excited. Thank you, Dr. Cash. Um, I know I'm applying it to my life. And I am guilty of picking up the phone, the computer before God. And I've been in intentional to say, hey, get to your devotion. But I have been slacking. And I got back on track, I think Monday or Tuesday. No, Monday. Monday morning. I had to get back on track. So like you said, getting off track and getting the business first. No, it's God first. Mm. Uh, my name is Anna Queen Tut. I am the CEO of Queen Tut Enterprises. And we don't sell homes. We build generational wealth. We help you through real estate, investing, helping with your tax planning and tax strategy, and then helping you to get your technology in order. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Would you like to announce our next speaker for next month, Ms. Anna? Okay. I got this thing in my ear. Okay. Yes. I'm so excited. Where he at? He need to show himself. Show your picture, brother GC. <laughs> so we got a great speaker next month. Oh, there he is. Let me bring him up. Let me bring him up. There he goes. He's going to be, Brother GC is going to be speaking next month in May. And I know that you guys have been getting the fire um, with our faith team. So he's going to bring the fire next month. Make sure you stay ready. Get on here, even though we may have technical difficulties or whatever, but we know that we're going to receive a blessing. So, Brother GC, are you excited to bring it next month? Unmute yourself. Thank you. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm still working on it, but I'm ready. All right. And you. we ready for you. So all, all right. right. Let's go. <laughs> all right. Well, we have pretty much come to the end of our uh, webinar today with the amazing speaker, Dr. Cash, Kathy Cash. Again, right. thank you so much, Doctor. And um, we just want to thank everyone for coming out. We hope that you will continue to come out. We want to be a blessing. To everyone, if you have any input, any questions, needing prayer, please reach out to us. Um, Anna, is there anything else that maybe you want to say before we have our closing prayer? No, if you have prayer requests, definitely put them in the chat. Um, but reach out to us if you have prayer requests. If you need us to encourage you, we're here. 
If you feel like you're going to item by yourself in your business, we're here to lift you up. If you feel like you're not doing your devotion and putting God first and walking in your purpose, that's what we're here for. So definitely join us and reach out to us. We're not your average chamber, but we walk in by faith. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Lottie, would you like to close us out in prayer? You're on mute. <laughs> okay, I, I done prayed and finished. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Father God, we come giving you honor and praise. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and what in our lives, Father. We thank you that we have an opportunity, Father God, to just speak into the lives of each other. Uh, thank you for that inspiration, Lord God. Thank you for the word that was shared, Father God. We ask that you would just encourage our hearts, Lord God, as we move to implement everything that was shared with us tonight. Father God, for those that are not feeling well, we ask that you would just touch Lord God in the name of Jesus, that you would renew strength, Father God, that you would heal, heal bodies, Lord God. We give you praise, Father, and we thank you for this ministry, Lord God. We ask and pray, Father God, that as we prepare to sleep tonight, Father, that you would allow your angels to watch over us, Lord God, and then uh, touch us with the finger of love as we rise in the morning, Father. We glorify you in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.